Welcome to the Artwell Awards. What a welcome. <laughs> Give another round of applause for our heartbeat teaching artist. That dance is actually a traditional dance from Ansamani's people. And let us take a moment to give thanks to all the ancestors, whoever they may be, whether they're from Africa, whether they're Jewish ancestors, whether they're European ancestors, Lenape ancestors, on whose land, Palestinian ancestors, and the source of life that's brought us to this moment. What great joy. The generosity that's brought us to this moment. Thanks to my good friends, Michael and Peg Ambrose, I had a chance recently to watch in 3D a NASA documentary about the Hubble telescope. It went into nebulas, and I am captivated every day by watching what it looks like inside a nebula with the undulating colors and energies and the birth the birthing of star nurseries, stars, and galaxies. Did you know that right now, stars and galaxies are being born somewhere? <laughs> Did you know that NASA not only explores outer space, but inner space? In the 60s, in 1968, they took a study, NASA took a study that they had designed to measure creativity in potential scientists who might be especially innovative and creative. And the study worked so well, the test worked so well, that they took it to a head start and they studied 1,600 young three to five-year-olds. And they studied them again when they were five, when they were 10, when they were 15. The five-year-olds, 98% of the five-year-olds tested as creative geniuses. The same study repeated five years later, those same children, their creativity had dropped to 30%. That same, those same children were studied five years later. When they were 15, it had dropped to 12%. And NASA did, gave the same test to 280,000 adults who tested 2% as creative geniuses. We are wired for creativity, and we have a creativity crisis. Can you imagine what it would be like if with the intractable problems, complexities that we experience today that leave us in anxiety soups, can you imagine if we reversed that process and reclaimed our creativity? What would that feel like in hospitals? What would that feel like in workplaces? What would it feel like around our dining room tables? We see in Artwell classrooms, K to 12, every day, the process of nurturing the creativity that we are all born with. 
We also see terrible trauma that our students have endured that often is beyond what we can imagine. And yet, every day, we see love and joy and creativity emerging. It actually does start with love. Our staff and our teaching artists love our students. And they love each other. They create processes for creating sanctuary and a sense of safety where students can talk about their worst pains or, and their greatest dreams. They bring different art forms, multiple art forms in which students can play and connect with the joy of being alive and take risks in listening and creating and sharing their voices and exploring their inner spaces and outer spaces. We see love every day on the face of tutors who work with second and third graders in reading to help bring them to grade level in reading and then our students who have love and joy on their faces when they can write poetry when they experience, I can be anything, I can be me, which is the name of an exhibit we have at the Woodmere Museum right now through May, a line from a student poem. We see this ex expanding understandings with middle school students and our Art of Growing leaders who risk having difficult and brave conversations on topics that they choose, including a vast variety of experiences related to their feelings about police and gun violence, where there's a lot of disagreement in the room and they find a way to listen deeply and respect each other and choose a creative action that they can all get around together. One of the places where we are witnessing creativity exponentially is with our Youth Leadership Council. Last November, Artwell's Youth Leadership Council joined forces with North Square Neighborhood's Youth Advisory Group, and two groups of students from different parts of the city, different neighborhoods, different schools, came together with great excitement and decided on the things they wanted to learn. They wanted to learn facilitation skills. They wanted to learn leadership styles. They wanted to learn artistic skills. They wanted to learn, to re learn how to research. And the wisdom of our teaching artists and staff who knew to take a back seat and contain their own amazing facilitation skills so that our students can lead with their voices. I wish I could go on and on about all of that, what they've done, and it is just amazing knowing that they are now planning an event uh, that is putting to work all that they've learned that'll happen later this spring. There was a book that came out a few years ago called Waiting for Superman about what's happening in our public schools, and it proclaims on the front cover, the state of our country won't be decided on a battlefield it'll be decided in the classroom. At Artwell, we know that classrooms do not have to be battlefields. They can be sanctuaries. They can be places where stars and new constellations are discovered, celebrated, and born. Ask us about our Artwell at Work program that brings people like Ansamani and, our art and artists into workplaces so businesses and community groups can discover the same. At Artwell, we know we're not NASA, and we have a big vision. And we are so grateful that you are here. And at this time, we want to join forces in an even bigger way. We want to work together to make sure that all of our classrooms are sanctuaries and safe spaces where creativity and innovation can emerge with leaders like we will be honoring tonight. 
In the words of our teaching artists from a training they did last fall, in one of their collective poems, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. We can. We can, we can surprise each other. We can listen, create, heal, learn, grow. We can change the world. We can turn things inside out, create new worlds with what we've been given. We can. We can. We can. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. And now it is my complete honor and privilege to introduce the Youth Poet Laureate of Philadelphia, Husna Hashem, who is here to introduce our student, Artwell student leader, honoree. Husna. Khadija Sasei is a 12th grade student at Parkway West High School. She is a slam champion of the Philly Slam League, a 2017 Philly Youth Poetry Movement Slam Team member, a 2017 Brave New Voices International Youth Poetry Slam Festival finalist, and a community leader. Through Artwell, Khadija has been involved with the We the Poets program and the Artwell um, Slam Team. Additionally, she has performed and spoken for the Combating Anti-Muslim Bigotry Youth Conference, Peace Day Philly, Fox 29, and a March for Black Women. She is the organizer behind the hashtag Prayer as Protest, developed in response to her school's refusal to allocate a location for Muslim students to pray. Through her leadership, she organized dozens of students to pray congregationally despite eventually leading to the allocation of a daily prayer space. I first met Khadija in 2015 as my competitor in the local slam poetry community. <laughs> Regardless of the fact that we literally were competing against each other, I never felt like I was competing against Khadija. I instead felt like I was growing into a powerful friendship, a fellow black Muslim woman poet. I gravitated towards Khadija out of pressing familiarity and the deep desire to be recognized by someone of such likeness. Khadija has since inspired me and challenged me to be a better writer and a better community member. I use the term foremother to affectionately refer to women of color writers who came before me and paved the way for poets like Khadija and I to exist in this art form. And the words of Gwendolyn Brooks found on a loose scrap of paper in her archives, who does life as a poet? One lives as a human being. In that activity, life as a poet is included I guess, along with life as a black IP boiler, life as a baby maker, life as a lecturer, life as a listener, life as a typist for five lawyers. I never gave up love, lunch, book reading, movies, restaurant romping, strolling, friend visiting, for life as a poeting. Poeting has been always part of this life, my life as a warm-hearted, resilient, open-eyed human being, being human. Khadija's work repeatedly takes us back to that place of living described by Brooks. For Khadija, there are no lines drawn between activism, poetry, and everyday living. Instead, her poetry does us the honor of exposing us to ourselves again and again, and encourages us to interrogate our own relationships with our identities and how those relationships can transcend compartmentalization within our lives. Khadija graciously allows us the privilege of witnessing her personal exploration of race, identity, and gender. I am beyond proud to present the 2018 Artwell Student Award to my friend, the poet, performer, and youth activist, Khadija Sasei. Before we present the award, I'd like to introduce Bethlehem the Vocationist, who will be performing a creative rendition of Khadija's poem, 
first grown, last picked in her honor. Good evening, all. So, I've learned growing up in America that the blackest berries are so sweet because they are always I mean, the blackest berries are so sweet because they are always picked. Less. Now, I see them blackberries be the sweetest because they are always picked when they are not dismissed. Whenever they are picked, if ever they are picked, they are always, always picked left. The blackest berries are so sweet because they're always pick last. The blackest berries are so sweet because they're always pick last. See, the blackest berries are so sweet because they're always pick last. Blackberries last. Sweet blackberries last, last, last. What is the opposite of nightmares? Bleached dreams. How come I'm always made aware that my skin be unwanted property? How come taking a shade off means taking a weight off sea? Surely my husband would come if my melanin just sprung up off me flying swiftly into the background. My skin be an abandoned house. Darker than night. I disappear. Only to emerge with the strength of a black panther. My skin is mine and mine alone. I will never compromise my complexion for a lighter skin tone. See, I never needed your validation to be this gorgeous, this permanent, this dark, this sharp, this beautiful, this cultural, this habitable. Though I've seen eyes orbit them As if light were the only form of beauty See they be glowing like stars pretty Light-skinned girls be bright like the sun, but we, yes, we be dark like galaxies. Like galaxies.
Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to Husna and Bethlehem for that amazing performance. I really appreciate it. <laughs> before I was vocal, before I was a spoken word artist, and before I knew art well, I was a ninth grader who didn't know her own power. Khadija from ninth grade stopped asking when someone told her no or that she wasn't capable her parents wanted her to be a doctor, so she told everyone she wanted to be a doctor and only felt the joy when their faces lit up with excitement. She wanted to be wealthy, to buy her parents cars and herself a smile. Ninth grade Khadija was not a big dreamer. She was, in fact, a learner. On her first day of high school, ninth grade Khadija was excited to make new friends and to be a part of a new classroom. However, she did not realize that they were all the same as the ones she had previously. She was content with her surroundings and, her familiar, and its familiarity. She felt in control until she wasn't. The day I got transferred to Parkway West, I would have begged to restart, to change everything that had happened. But I now realize that it made me everything I am today. My first week at Parkway was really hard. I was lonely, I didn't know anyone, and I tried to make friends, but everyone knew I was different often pointing out our differences, the way I talked, the way I dressed, my last name. My peers found me interesting or annoying or both. On numerous occasions, I was found at the end of an argument, persecuted for being a know-it-all or talking too much. Every week got more and more difficult. The most I felt noticed was when a stranger held their gaze for longer than usual. On those days, a tear would reach my face as soon as I reached my bedroom door. I did not know I'd stop crying when a woman walked in my second period class speaking of slam poetry and free writing. Later, I found out her name was Miss Sarah. In short, Miss Sarah brought joy and optimism into every room she entered. Some days, if you were lucky, you might catch her singing Taylor Swift at high volume in her car. When she edited my poems, she never thought to deconstruct or make them any different. She only built upon concepts and ideas that were already there. She often did the same with people. Miss Sarah taught me how to celebrate differences. Practicing it br brought friendships into my classroom. Miss Sarah was the first teaching artist I met from Artwell and was one of the first teachers to ever care about me. Every Excuse me. Every mentor that came from Artwell was similar in that aspect. Noel, a talented germophobic poet from New York, showed me how to be mindful of other poets' feelings and their growth. Julian, often found wearing sleeveless shirts and saying, it's not cold, uh, taught me how to break out of my shell on stage. And finally, Noor, who has continuously helped me through, get, through navigating through my, let me just look. <laughs> Noor, who has continuously aided me in navigating and building on my craft. Along with mentors at Artwell, along with mentors, Artwell has brought me Philly Youth Poetry Movement, Team Black 2K17, and friends like Makaya, who let me know I'm not alone when the DJ is playing soft music and all we want to do is listen to her music and dance terribly to it or Asma, a friend I've not only shared inside jokes about being African with, but a friend who takes my success and failures as her own. 
And finally, Cassidy, who at the end of the day embraces me with puns, random head bobs, and a whole 36 trolley ride of laughter. Artwell has stood by me when I led my own protest in school, stood on final stage for the first time, and any time I needed help. Being involved with Artwell has made me a better writer and a better person. Artwell's teaching artists and staff are the first adults to ask me what I wanted instead of assuming to know what's best for me. Their passion for arts and education led me to my de decision to become an education major. <laughs> Too often, our kids turn away for questioning the world in front of them, for criticizing, and thinking critically and being creative. It is important that youth everywhere have the opportunities Artwell has given me, whether it's through a mentor who sings her favorite songs until her lungs give, or merely having support from those who care for you. It is through these organizations and people that the youth learn we can be vocal because there's always something to say. Thank you. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. God bless. Such an inspiration. MashaAllah. Wow. See, these are the things that Artwell produces for you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight and supporting Artwell and joining us to celebrate our honorees. Congratulations, honorees. My name is Adab Ibrahim. I am a board member of Artwell, and I'm also the outreach director at Al-Aqsa Islamic Society. I have also had the distinct pleasure of being an honoree myself, so I know the, um, the appreciation and the recognition by your peers. This evening, I have the, the honor to be presenting Joe Brenman the award. See, Joe didn't know this, did you? No. <laughs> I kept it a surprise. <laughs> uh, because we have not only had the opportunity to make art, but we've had um, the opportunity to become close friends in the past 15 years. So it's amazing how time flies. When we first started, uh, my boys uh, were nine years old, and I have twins that are eight years old. And so, um, you know, now they've transformed into young men, and uh, Joe and I, <laughs> we, we stayed the same, right? <laughs> we didn't change at all. <laughs> the boys are totally different, grown men, facial hair, but Joe and I, we miraculously stayed the same. <laughs> But uh, when we first met, it was in 2003, it was um, at the Doorways of Peace project at my mosque, Al-Aqsa Islamic Society in North Philadelphia. And um, it was just one of the easiest relationships to develop. You know, I mean, getting to know Joe was just really easy. And um, actually, I think anyone who knows Joe can vouch for how easy it is to know and love Joe. So I can't say I'm privy to that, <laughs> but what I can say is Joe really digs my family. <laughs> because we're always trying to feed him and fatten him up. <laughs> uh, my dad used to always try to bring food. My mom is like so upset with herself because she hasn't had Joe over to feed him and cook for him his favorite foods. Um, every time I see Joe, I try to bring him some snacks that he might like, and sometimes he'd eat them and sometimes He's, he watches himself, so, I mean, <laughs> and um, I know he appreciates all our efforts. Um, needless to say, we have not succeeded in our efforts to, <laughs> but he obviously takes good care of himself and watches his diet and figure. <laughs> so, um, but throughout all that, I've been grateful to know Joe and love Joe, and um, we've become really good friends, and he's even, 
you know, give me a little bit of his craft through teaching me some of his mosaic art. So I'm truly grateful for the relationship and friendship we've created over the years. To give you some background about Joe, he's an amazing artist and sculptor. His works have been exhibited in numerous art shows here and abroad. He also has a wide range of artistic skills, including mosaics and collages. His public art could be seen across the city from Old Kensington at Al-Aqsa, Bar Ferdinand and North Liberties, and the Germantown Jewish Center. He made a marble sculpture for the Hung King's Temple in Vietnam. He has been an artist in residence with Artwell since 2004, and is currently working with students in James Rose Elementary School in West Philadelphia. He is also vested in, in interfaith work and participates in local interfaith events. And I can vouch for that because we've worked on um, Interfaith Peace Walk, which I'm a co-founder of, and I see some of my co-faith partners here, and the Interfaith Building Group, and I see members of those here. So um, he's not only a gifted artist, but he's also um, someone who's you know, giving to um, the community and interfaith relationships. And I think, um, you know, he loves taking on projects where he can work with people and develop those type of relationships. So, um, you know, we, Joe, Joe is a true gem. And we appreciate all that he's done. And um, as a show of our appreciation from Artwell, we have a special video that has been made in your honor. <laughs> no dance here, <laughs> just video <laughs> that we'd like to show you and we hope that you all enjoy. So I wanna come around and see this. Every time Mr. Joe come in, it give us like a time in the day to take a break and draw and stuff. It's creative and it's fun. So the kids are always excited to see Mr. Joe and he just has a very calm presence around them and I think that he just helps them see themselves as, as artists. I liked art before Mr. Joe came and now he really just helps me with art more. He helps me draw my horizon lines, and he helps me draw my sky. You don't have to be just like other people. You can do different things. You can be creative. Don't be shy. Don't be scared to share. Just really put your, put your feelings into your artwork, basically. People have a real back for Caring safety within their presence, and Joe is definitely one of those people. I like his class because he's really encouraging. Like one time when I had made a mistake, he had told me artists will always make mistakes, and artists can turn mistakes into something new and beautiful. He's one of those amazing teachers whose presence in the room really seems to inspire everybody. We drew a map recently of like our school or our block that we live on. It was fun. So even students who aren't necessarily gravitating towards art, he shows them how to do things in an, a very approachable way and then they get inspired and if someone is struggling, he's really good at just helping them focus themselves and and to try something new. I, th I think he makes it easy to take risks. He gave us an instruction and then he would let us take that instruction and like take it in your own world. I'm drawing or painting or coloring. It's like I'm in a whole different world. Like I just love Earth. Joe has so many years of experience working in the field as an artist himself and doing public art. So he brings all that to bear when he does a project. It has been an honor to know Joe and to see him interact with the students, with staff, and with his co-teachers. I feel every time I'm in the space with him, I always end up leaving with a smile and I can imagine many others feeling the same way. It was my early years in Philadelphia. 
I met Joe there. I feel lucky and honored to know him. Even though he is a master at what he does and such an accomplished artist, he's always open to learning. He has a lot of humility in that way and he's always eager to learn. He actually gifted the mosque the Dome of the Rock here. It's a mosaic piece and I think it's probably what always had inspired me in my own endeavors to pursue mosaic art because I just fell in love with this and he made that uh, as a contribution from himself. Joe Brenman is an extraordinary artist and human being. He has mined the deep well of his own creativity and soul, including through some really hard experiences like serving in, the, uh, in Vietnam and other things and mined all of that to import it into his art in a way that flows out into the world with great love and joy. I have seen students of all different ages and walks of life work with Joe over the course of over 15 years. I have never seen one person who wasn't completely inspired by the chance to work with Joe and the very gentle, powerful way that it taps their own well of art, artist and creative expression and connection between all of us as human beings. Congratulations, Joe. We could not be more thrilled and beyond excited to honor you with the Mickey Young Leadership Award. I've had the pleasure of both working with Joe on site and through the Art Well experience, and I can honestly say that no one is more deserving of the Mickey Young Art Well Achievement Award than Joe Brenman, and I want to congratulate him and let you all know that Joe works and lives his principles. He spreads peace, joy, and love throughout each daily experience. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Joe. And I want to say a big congratulations. Congratulations, Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe. You are a really nice teacher, and I'm glad that you pop in and that you like to help out. Congratulations, Joe. Joe, congratulations. It's such a pleasure to work with you, and I really appreciate all that you do. I've learned so much from watching you teach and from teaching with you. I really appreciate you. Congratulations, Joe. I really love you. And I wish you a very, very, very lucky years uh, to come. So Joe, it's a delight to know you. We've become close friends, I hope, I think. And I'm very inspired and love working with you. Um, you're one of my heroes. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Joe! That was amazing. Thanks to all those who uh, participated in making the video. Uh, congratulations, Joe. Uh, thanks so much for, for that. Thank you, Adab. Uh, tell your mom to start cooking, please. I'm ready. <laughs> um, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks so much. I'm, I'm truly honored to receive the Mickey Young Artwell Leader Award. Um, Mickey was really a, a great inspiration to all of us at Artwell uh, and to so many more people. And um, I'm, I'm really proud to share these awards with these two amazing leaders, uh, Helen Gim and uh, Khadija Sesi. Um, through Artwell, I've gotten to work on a lot of really amazing uh, art and mural projects. 
including the work we did at the Al-Aqsa Islamic Society. Um, we started the murals in 2003 and finished the last one in, in 2016. And um, they were more than just about creating art. They were about interfaith and community building. And I feel really blessed for, for all the connections and friendships that I got to make through those, through making that mural process. Um, the staff and teaching artists at Artwell bring art, poetry, and music to hundreds of Philly students every year. Many of these students are hearing negative things and even hateful things about who they are, where they're from, and what religions they practice. And by creating uh, safe and nurturing spaces, they're able to do poetry and art, and, and they can express their, their feelings and thoughts to counteract that negativity and to just be the, the naturally gifted artist that they are. Being an art world teaching artist is really meaningful to me. Um, uh, seeing all the great uh, poetry and art our students do, it's truly inspiring to me. Many of our students are undervalued by our society. And the art and poetry that we share with them is also undervalued. This is why we need organizations like Artwell and the teaching artists to stand up for the kids and to stand up for the power that art has to transform their lives. I'm sure uh, all you Eagle fans and uh, everyone that saw the Super Bowl remembers that great play, the Philly Special. <laughs> well, that's how I see our, our Artwell students. They're the real Philly Specials. Artwell, Artwell is a great and supportive organization. And everyone from the director, Susan Teigen, to the board,